We like to sing about that. We like to sing that we're not afraid. But I felt in my spirit all morning that we're gripped by fear. Yes, that's right. We're, we're afraid. We're afraid to be healed. Because there's, there's many different reasons. Some of you are afraid that without the storm, you don't know who you are. Some of you are afraid that if you're healed of whatever's ailing you, whatever's got you down, you're afraid of what God might call you to be. Or better yet, you may already be called. And you're afraid of answering that call. So you're just going to wallow in self-pity and wallow in the same depression that you've battled for years. Some of us are just afraid of who we will be. Some of us are afraid to just step out and allow God to, to do something in our life. We're going to have a time of prayer now. And I, I feel strongly in my spirit because I said it a while back and, and I feel like we haven't gotten victory from it. But we're not just battling sickness and stuff right now. I think that's the least of our problems, even though people are really sick. But we're battling situations. I guarantee you, each and every one of you can raise your hand and there's a situation that you've been going through. Maybe it's your own doing, maybe it's somebody else, maybe it's just out of our control. But I believe that we still haven't received a victory from it. Yeah. But I believe today that you can walk out of here in that situation and be completely fixed. I believe it. But I believe that it's only going to happen if you by faith will come up here to this altar and leave it. That, and, and knowing that when I, when I leave this altar, I'm walking away with them chains at the bottom of it. When I leave this altar, what I came with is gone. When I'm coming to this altar, I'm going to lay it down in Jesus' feet. And when I go back to my house today, I'm going to go back free, Brother Terrence. I'm going to go back clean. I'm going to be a, a weight's going to be off of my shoulders. It's going to take faith. And I'm talking about, I'm calling those of you that are battling things that nobody knows about. I'm calling everybody that, that you keep on going, service after service. You keep on going back home thinking, I wish that I would have gave it up. We just had a great service, and I, I wish that I would have stepped out. Next time. Next time I'm going to step out. Next time. And it goes over and over to, to repeat it. I want somebody to step out by faith today. I want some Jacobs to rise up. I'm not leaving without my, my miracle. I'm not leaving without this gone. I need some, some women with the issue of blood that says, if I can just touch it, if I can just touch it, I believe that we, we make things too difficult. Peter came up and he said, Silver and gold have my number, such as I have. I give to get up and walk. It's that easy, Brother Terrence. Come on, I've been given the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. We make things too difficult. This is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the church of the living God. I don't fear no sickness. I don't fear no bondage. I don't fear depression or anxiety. I don't fear
time I wanted to be the only one just to cure both of you. You're the only one. Oh, you're the only one.
when God's moving, you better be connected to it. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing more important than the entire universe than God moving. Nothing. So get your mind here, get your heart here, and your body here. Spirit, soul, and body connected. If you have your Bibles, you'd like to stand with us in honor of the reading of the Word of the Lord. We're going to read one passage of Scripture, and then we'll allow you to be seated. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 18. Again, I honor you for being here today. To all of our guests, we're better because you're here. Yes. Yes. You made us better the moment you walked in the room. We hope that you will. If you don't have a home church, consider us. And uh, I, uh, I I mentioned this, I believe, on Wednesday night, but at the recovery conference last week, Bishop Long, who pastors in Paris, Missouri. Does anybody know where Paris, Missouri is? There's a couple people do. I don't. I didn't know there was no such printer. But I know where Paris, Tennessee is, and I know where Paris, France is, but that's about the extent of my Paris. But he said at their church, they have people that drive over 100 miles one way yeah. to come to just come to service. We have people driving from uh, 40, 45 minutes away right now that come regular. Amen. 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 That's okay. We love it. We're yeah. honored for it. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to multiply the river, man. Yeah. But today. God is going to challenge us. <coughs> Timothy chapter 1, verses 18. I gave out about nine different uh, uh, sticky notes. Um, when I call, when I get ready for you to read, I just like all nine of you to come up together across the front uh, and we'll have a microphone because Sister Miss Virginia told me we've got to have a microphone. <laughs> That's not the only reason, but uh, but people online want to hear it and they need to hear it. Praise yes. God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're not just this church. Yes. That's right. That's right. 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 And I told y'all, Bishop Long prophesied to me. Out of that whole group of people, he prophesied to me that the sound of my voice is going to go out over the broadcast yeah. and going to draw people in. Did he not yes. 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 That's not this my voice. Not just my voice. The month of October, all of our ministers, beginning September 26th, Brother David's going to teach that Wednesday night. Uh, and uh, uh, the, all of our ministers will be preaching one Sunday in October. So it's not going to be my voice you hear. I'm still going to be on Wednesday nights and I'm still going to be here. I will tell you that October the 17th, we don't have it in the bulletin yet, but October the 17th, no. That's not true. October the 20th, I'm going to be preaching for New Bethel, the, uh, for Bishop Bell that came here for Sister uh, uh, Moore's funeral. They've invited me to come preach there on October 20th. That's, uh, I, I, and all of you are welcome to go. And then November the 17th, we'll be preaching in Lilburn at Life Changers for their Eagle, Eagles Conference on Friday, November the 17th. We'd like you to be involved in that. But God is moving. Right. Yeah. 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 Amen. Today, you get to decide if you want to go with him. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. How many of you know the prophecy that's on your life does no good unless you agree with it? Yes, come on. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can prophesy over your life. And if you fight it and work against it, it won't happen. That's right. You've got to submit yourself and surrender yourself to the prophecies that have gone on before us. This charge I commit to thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. 
And today we will preach to you on this subject from war to warfare. From war to warfare. God, in the name of Jesus, I stand before you. I'm just your servant. I have no right to be here. I haven't earned this. I'm not qualified for this. But you've called me to the kingdom for such a time as this. I pray, God, you will anoint me. I don't want there to be any personal agenda in it. I'm not angry. I'm not frustrated. But I have got an unction from heaven. I yes, feel like I'm on a mission for heaven. I pray, God, you will anoint me to deliver this marvelous story and message. I pray, God, that I, I just submit myself to your hands. My mouth is your mouth. My mind is your mind. My body belongs to you, God. And I surrender to you for the delivery of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. There's a war going on. We're in it, and we've always known it. And we've also known that there's only one side that's going to win, and that's the Lord's side. The definition for war is an armed fighting between two or more countries or two or more entities, and it is a general term describing the conflict. For instance, it can be said that the United States of America was in Involved in the Civil War or the war between the states from 1861 to 1865. But fighting did not transpire every day from 1861 to 1865. We can't say the Civil War was happening during those times. So it speaks to the entire body of the conflict. The United States was involved in World War II from 1941 to 1945, but that just speaks of the embodiment of the entire war. Of course, the Battle of the Bulls, the Battle of the Rhine, Midway, etc., in World War II, and then Shiloh, and the Battle of the Wilderness, and, and the, the Battle of Island Number 10 would define the different battles or different conflicts during the war. But the word war refers to the entire body of the conflict. And this one we're in started in the garden when the devil tempted Eve to eat of the fruit and her and Adam were kicked out of the garden for violating the law of God. And there began to be a war take place from that moment until now in the spiritual realm. It is a spiritual war. Our eternity hangs in the balance. I said it is a spiritual war and our eternity hangs in the balance. The enemy of our soul is a thief, an accuser, deceiving liar, and father of all lies. He has been defeated by God and within our obedience to God lies the key to us also experiencing a victorious life here and in heaven. Bought and paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The key word in that beautiful promise is obedience to God. I would submit to you today that the Lord is interested and involved in every area of your life. We have got to start, we have got to come to a place where we awaken every morning and declare to the Lord, He's given our permission to Him to order our steps in His Word. Yes. I want every breath I take, every step I take, yes. every word I speak, and every glance I make to be ordered by the Lord. Trumpet. And the, the words I call today is all hands 
on deck. We need everybody. We need everyone. We need everyone that's here. We need everyone that should be here. We need everyone that's fighting hell. Opportunity for victory. Yes. 
Our strength, our temper, our frustrations, our passions, our abilities, nor our talents offer us the opportunity for victory. That is why we're tired. That's why we're burnt out. That's why we're frustrated. And it looks like we're losing. Yep. Yes, yes. We're losing family members, friends, men and women that are called of God with a holy purpose. But today they're wallowing in a quiet mire in the devil's pit of deception. They are weak and they are beat down and they're wearing themselves out trying to appear okay, but they're not. They're losing, but we aren't winning either. Yeah. We don't. Here we go. We don't win by staying busy. We don't win by having more church services. We win when we activate the weapons of our warfare. We win when we activate the weapons of our warfare. They are not coming, but they are mine. They only become mighty when they are operated through God. In short, they are dependent upon the mighty and the might and the ability of God for success. You will not succeed any other way. Yes, he will not fight for us in frivolous, glory seeking, outside of his purpose battles. Yeah. Our family and friends and loved ones are in danger of becoming casualties of war. Unless we start treating this like warfare. The battle is not for the wishy-washy. It's not for the marginal church door. It's not for the lazy. It's not a battle that can only be won through these mighty weapons operating through God. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, if you don't have it to put on your, the PowerPoint or put on the screen, but just believe me, you've read it before. It's David and Goliath chapter. David went out to fight or excuse me, David didn't go out to fight the giant. David came to the army to bring some groceries to him and find out how the fight was going. Yeah. <clears throat> and then go back home and tell his daddy how it was happening. But when David showed up and started asking questions about that time, the bully came up. His name was Goliath. And he stood out there on a hill. And when he walked out on the mountain and said, Give me a man, everybody around ran and hid. Yeah. David said, what's going on here? And Eliab, his big brother who looked like a king, yeah. I said, who looked like a king? Yeah. He turned to David. Mm. He didn't say this, but I can picture it. He turned to David and said, shh, what's wrong with you, stupid? Yeah. Yeah. Here's what the Bible says he did say to him. You naughty little boy. I know the pride and naughtiness of your heart. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. I'm going to change the words just a little bit. He said, you came out here to see the war. Yep. 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 Can you imagine David? What war are you talking about, homie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, I know you're in a war, yeah. but I don't see no fighting. Yeah. All I know is the giant came out and hollered. He didn't holler at nobody. But all of y'all ran and hid. Yeah. Come to see the fight? That's the attitude that many of us have. And that's why there are those among us that are angry at all the new worshipers that have come in. Because they get used and they get acknowledged and, and they look like they're being elevated. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Right. Jealousy has no place in the body of Christ. That's right. Yeah. Right. Eliab said, you naughty little boy, you just come to see the fight. And David said, what fight? When we activate our weapons and start fighting the way we're supposed to fight, 
Is there anybody among us that you will admit that hell has been coming against you? And you've been losing sleep at night. And you've been stressing. And you've been thinking of all the different ways you need to come against hell. All the different ways you can fix this. All the different ways you can defeat the enemy. And you're laying in bed night after night. And then you get up in the middle of the night and you walk the floors. And, and you're depressed and stressed and discouraged. I come to give you the answer to your problems today. You've been wallowing around in the knowledge that you're in a war. But the Holy Ghost sent me today to tell you it's time to go from war to warfare. It is a heavily fortified containment. The picture is of a fort or an encampment sitting on the top of a cliff or a rock with perhaps only a ladder that gets up to it or maybe one way to get up to it from the front. And it's impenetrable with very limited points of attack. It is a, a bastion, if you will, a tower that sits up there and everybody that comes against it, they stretch their head because there's no good plan of attack. It's a stronghold. But the Bible says when we activate our weapons, the mighty weapons through God, we will pull down strongholds. Yes. I want you to look at this. You've got to hear what I'm about to say. Helps word studies. This is the only time in scripture this word is used. Strongholds in the original Greek. And it is used figuratively. Please stay with me. You gotta hear what I'm saying right now. You gotta hear what I'm saying. Because it's gonna eliminate a lot of your frustration. It is used figuratively of a false argument in which a person seeks shelter trying to escape from reality. We've been trying to use human reasoning to fight a battle with people who are living in fantasy land. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, for sure. How many have experienced it? How many of you experienced it that we're trying to fight, trying to talk reason to somebody who's living in a lie? And brother Blake, the Bible says they created this lie, they created this false world to live in because they're trying to hide from reality. Yeah. 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 Are we not on the line back here today? Why not? It work. It's messed up. We're gonna have to fix it. Yeah. It's We'll survive. <laughs> it's a false argument in which a person seeks shelter to escape reality. Stop fighting fantasy land. The Bible says that our weapons are designed to pull that stronghold down. Look at this. Casting down imaginations. That word casting down means to gain it down and leave nothing standing. The imaginations is referring to is both our imagination and others. That imagination is personal opinions that establish values. Stop trying to fight with the way you feel things ought to be. Yeah. Every recovery people, I never read this before in here. But I want you to listen to what it says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every huh? every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I never have read it before. But why in the world do people use drugs? Huh? 
to get high, to get high, and it exalts itself. And the enemy has told them that getting high is better than living for God. That getting high will give you an escape. But the Bible says that our ability and our weapons are designed to pull that down. It's messed up thinking, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We're trying to we're trying to go out into the world and get down on people's level and wrestle with them in the home pen. And the Lord didn't never tell us to do that. That's right. Right. That's, right. That's, right. That's good. Yep. Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You know what the knowledge of God is? It's knowledge you gain through personal experience. You know better. You know better. But we do it anyway. We go out in any way. Some of us have decided the only way to win the battle is to try to build a big army against them. So we go and tell everybody about it. You're against, you're out of the will of God. You don't need nobody but the Lord to win your battle. And bringing it into captivity. Am I doing okay? I feel like I lost everybody. I don't like you don't follow me. Look here. And bringing into captivity every thought. Everybody say ours and theirs. Ours and theirs. These weapons we've got invade the hearts and minds of our enemies. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Our thoughts and the thoughts of others, especially those in opposition to us. So exactly what is the obedience of Christ? <laughs> Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you got to start thinking like Jesus thinks. Right? right? right. Who... Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to or identical with God. It's what it means in the original. He didn't think it was a problem saying, I am God. I am. Abraham was, I am. Yep. When you see me, you see the Father. He had no problem doing that. But instead of making himself an elevated being, he made himself of no reputation. He came as the son of a carpenter out of Nazareth. And if you've read the Bible at all, you know ain't no good thing coming out of Nazareth. And he took upon him the form of a servant, excuse me, a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. I said he humbled himself. Yes. Yes. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. Why, why, why do you want to keep fussing and fighting over baptizing somebody in the titles? None of which are a name. Please, I'm not being ugly, but I just want to know why you keep on fighting it. Because it's the devil's agenda. Yeah. Because he knows that Father is not the name above every name. Son is not the name that's above every name. And Holy Ghost is not the name that's above every name. Just a moment.
moment. So, our weapons are established in the name of Jesus. Our weapons are established in the name of Jesus. All right, man. This morning we had a prayer meeting at breakfast time. I want number one to stand down here. I want number nine to stand down here. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you got a yellow, I want you to get up here. They got, they got much time to wait. If I preach long, it's your fault. Some men didn't get a paper because we weren't here during prayer. We weren't here during the elements, and I just handed them out. I pray the Lord did tell me who to hand it to. So our weapons are established in the name of Jesus. They include prayer. Read. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Pray without ceasing. Our prayer meetings have shrunk down to almost nothing. God's not pleased with it. We need a revival in our prayer meetings. And we need to stop trying to preach up a prayer and start getting down to business with God. We need to battle the cage of hell. And we need to let the enemy know that we are a body of believers, of men, of women, of youth and children. And this entire church that knows how to pray. Here's why, brother. Let it read. James 5 and 16. Confess your faults one to another. Yeah. And pray one for another. Yes. That you may be healed. That's why yeah. we're praying. The effectual, Preach. perfect prayer Preach. of a righteous man availeth much. That's why we pray. Yeah. If you don't shout and clap and rejoice yeah. over a call of prayer more than anything, we right. got problems. And this is why 
2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. All scripture is given by the yep. inspiration of God and is, and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for, for, reproof, doctrine, for, reproof, for correction, for, correction for, instruction in righteousness, for instruction in righteousness. That that the man of God may be perfect, perfect thoroughly furnished thoroughly with large furnished good works. Unto every good work, we've got to go into warfare. Hallelujah. You and this, yes. you're going to win. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Say, I don't understand the Bible. Get you another version. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Open it up. Right. Hold it up to heaven and tell the Lord. There you go. Yes. Don't yes. lose. Yeah. You got family that needs to be saved. Yes. And the word is what? Yes. The word is what? Yes. I got to understand this. Yeah. But you know something, Sister Maria? Even if I don't understand it, let me tell you what to do. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Mary, in the there days of go. Uzziah. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. Saying to your brother, Annie, and to your sister, Ruhamah, plead with your mother. Plead, for she is not my wife. Just start reading the word. Just read it anywhere. Just read it. Open up and read it anywhere. Because heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will pass away. The next weapon I'm supposed to be looking at my notes, but I'm lost right now. But I'm not lost. I'm in the Holy Ghost. Amen. What are you talking about, Brother That's Chris? Right. Tell us. You gotta come to church. Right. Yes. Yes. You don't do the Bible. I don't doubt and condemn nobody for missing. Right. I've already missed four churches in 11 years, and Brother McKinney did in 50 years. Yeah. I don't damn and condemn you for not coming to church. But don't text me and tell me you just don't feel like coming to church. Yeah. Right. I, I see something in my mind right now. I see people coming to church that ain't got no business being here. But they know that sometimes the only thing you've got yeah. is to be The only thing you've got is to sit down by somebody who you can pray. Moving from war to warfare. Read, Brother Chris. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembly yep. of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. That means some people have stopped coming yep. to church. Read. But exhorting one another. Lift one another up. That's right. and, yeah. and so much more. Yes. The more as ye see the day approach. Yes. Amen. Woo. God, come to church. I know you did time. I know you got stuff going on at home. But you know what I found out, Brother Shannon? I go to Sunday church. I go to Monday prayer. I go to Tuesday recovery, Wednesday church, and Thursday recovery. And my life has not got worse but better. Yeah. 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 And there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing in my life right now that I've sacrificed now by coming forward. You know what I was going to sit home and do most no. of the time? Nothing. That's right, right. That's right. That's true. Let me tell you, I, I know I know I'm all over the place right now, but I'm in the Holy Ghost. You believe that? Yes. Yes. Uh, you yes. believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. But that my girl all King got killed in a car accident April the twelfth, two thousand. No, excuse me, nineteen ninety-eight. She was supposed to have been with me. It was Easter Sunday. I feel like it was my fault she got killed. Yeah. She was supposed to ride with me to Kentucky, and I, I was too selfish. I decided I didn't want to go, so she drove herself and went down the interstate the wrong way and got killed in a car wreck. And it eat me up. But you know where I went Sunday night, Brother Derek? I came to the house of God because I didn't have no answers. I didn't have no solution. I felt like the, but I had to stay connected. And when I got in the house of God, I found my help. I came to church Sunday morning. I came Sunday night the day we buried my daddy. We had his funeral that afternoon. And I was in church in the morning and the night, Sister yeah. Maria, because I needed it. Yeah. yeah. I don't always feel spiritual when I come. I ain't always ready to run the aisles when no. I come. But I come because I know I got help. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Malachi 3, yep. 8 through 12. Read. Will a man rob God? All right, nobody says they're going to rob God. Read. Yet ye have robbed me. Uh-huh. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? How do we rob you, Lord? Read. In, in tithes and yep. offerings. In tithes and offerings. Tithe means 10% of your increase. When you tithe, the first offering, we learned this Wednesday night, is we'll really get tied in here right now. When we learn the first 10% of whatever you get goes to the Lord. That's right. That's right. It's easy for you to say you did it all. You must be crazy. You must be crazy. Don't come to me ever again telling me we brought your tithes. Them that ties ain't mine, they were the Lord's. Right. That's right. Right. what they're designed to do. Right. But so does every guest preacher that comes here. Right. They get paid out of right. time. Yeah. So does any time I give, anytime I give one of my team uh, uh, some kind of a gift or take them somewhere or something, it comes out of the time right. appreciation. And not only that, when I make money at the funeral home or when I make money preaching out, I tie that into the general fund. It don't come back to me. It goes to the church. Right. You want to know why? Because I got to give it to God. Right. 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 times the next day and I had a hundred dollars from last all week brother Ronnie my wife told me that every every automatic debt that we had in the history of our marriage came out the same day and there wasn't no money left for time guess what it came to hundred dollars mm -hmm. I took that money or I told I didn't even have it it was in our account I was going to take it out and just the truth baby I told Amanda she, I said you take this hundred dollars and you pay our time you return our tithe. You give our tithe. She said, I'm not doing that. I said, give it. She said, you won't be able to go to Louisiana. I said, and I quote, I ain't going to Louisiana on the Lord's money anyway. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. Amen. Amen. She came to church and she gave her tithe, returned our hundred dollars. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, that leaves us at Z, bro. <laughs> that ain't... We don't have nothing to eat and we don't have nothing I want. Sister Maria, that means no. I got zero dollars to my name. I turn around the church. I'm standing right there. Right by Sister Ashley. But I'm not going to come stand by you because you get nervous when I come stand by you. What a beautiful thing you wrote in the bulletin today, by the way. Thank you very much for sharing that. Beautiful thing. You haven't read it yet. You need to. Right. Sure is. He's, he's dead and gone now. So I can tell this. Brother Eugene Bethel came up to me. I was shaking hands and he came up to me and he said, you going to Louisiana tomorrow, brother? And I said, I am. He said, see me before you go. And his old lip puckered up and I start crying. I got a clue in the world what he wants, sis. Not a clue in the world. I said, yes, sir. At that time, he washed the ambulance every Monday morning out of the ambulance shed. And I turned around from Brother Eugene Bethel, and I bumped into Sister Eloise. Eloise Clayton, who's in the nursing home now. And she shook my hand and put something in it. Right here. Right here. I just put it in my pocket. I really didn't know what it was. Could have been a $5 bill. I didn't know. Could have been a request. Please pray for me. I, I didn't know what it was. The next morning, I meet up with Brother Eugene. The long and short of it is, he was pulling into Kinsey's parking lot. And his lip was puckered up when I sat in the car. He pulled out his wallet. And he gave me a $100 bill. And I looked in my pocket. And Sister Eloise had given me $35. And I gave him $100 to the Lord. And he gave me back 135 percent And I never told a soul. Yeah. You are cursed with a curse. If you don't give what God calls you to give, there's a curse on your life. That's the word. Yep. For, for ye have robbed me, yep. even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. Uh oh 
and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. It is God's plan. Yes. Say, what's that got to do with anything? You want to know why we say that declaration? Because it's true. Yes, it is. You want to know what? Because the Bible said, where your treasure is, is where your heart is. Yes. And I'm letting him know that all my treasure is in him. Yes. And before you start getting that, he knows I ain't my I don't know if you do or not. I don't get in there and check it. Where's Sister Mary? Do I check that stuff out or not? I don't check it out. I don't check it out. I get an email if you give to Givelify, but I just skim through them. Or I don't go checking out people's finances. Because I don't want you to be able to say when I preach about time and offerings, I'll pick it on you. Right. right. I love you, sister. Derek's mama. <laughs> Where we at, Brother Christian? I, I'm about out of time, but this is Labor Day weekend. I'm working on Mark 9 and 23. Jesus said unto him, What is that? Oh, does anybody know where your faith comes from? First place your faith comes from is God gives it to you. He has dealt to every man the measure of faith. You've got the ability to believe. Read, brother Christian. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe. All right. If you can believe. All things are possible to him that believe. How many things are possible? All things. How many of you have found that when you're fighting these battles with your carnal weapons, that your faith flies wings out the window? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Preacher, preach on faith and you get mad. Because we'll convince ourselves, I believed and it didn't happen. Yeah. No, your faith is already gone because you didn't trust God to do it in the beginning. Right. All right, we got to go. They're sitting down on the go, brother trip. Because well, it's getting good. You better be fired up and ready to go. <laughs> the blood of Jesus, Hebrews 9 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. Not by the blood of goats and calves. That was done away with. But by his own blood. By his entered, own blood. He entered in once into the holy place. Yeah. Yeah. Having obtained eternal Wait redemption for us. One time and retained, obtained eternal redemption for us. Read. For if the blood of bulls and goats and if the ashes of a heifer spring, spring killing and unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh. Yeah. How how, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from the dead works? Wait, 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 wait. Purge your conscience yes. Yes. from yes. dead works to serving the living God. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. There's been people trying to, to, trying to, to belittle this. Let me tell you something. I don't know. It ain't in the Bible. You can't find this word for word in the Bible, but I read that. Let me tell you what the old timers used to do when they were going to battle. You know what they would say? I plead the blood. That's right. I plead the blood. Matter of fact, they sing about it. I sing it sometimes, uh, but I got to let you know something. The blood of Jesus is one of your weapons. Yeah. yeah. Because when you begin the warfare, the devil is going to start reminding you you don't have any right to warfare. And then you can remind him, oh, wait just a minute, stupid. I plead, I plead the blood. I want to see what the blood of Jesus has washed in my and soul. I got every right to battle. I got every right to war. I got every right to come against you. Next, what are we doing now, Brother Cody? The peace of Jesus. Oh, John 14, wait a second. Six. Wait a second. The peace yes. of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This one, Sister Maria, this is where I struggle at the most right here. I can't sleep at night. It was last night. I couldn't sleep. You know, because my mind with all these what ifs. Yeah. This morning, I just got that. I had, I had a few of these, then I got more of them, and I could have kept on going. But I ran out of room on the cover of a Pentecostal Herald where I put them sticky notes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, fighting with mighty weapons. 
gives you peace. Because yep. it don't come from the world. No. Yeah. It don't come from going to church. It don't come from nowhere but read. But the comfort. But the comfort. Which is the Holy Ghost. Which is the Holy Ghost. You heard that, Brenda? Yeah. I did. You heard that, Brenda? He said it's the comfort. It's the Holy Ghost. Glory. Listen. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Father will send in my name. There it is again. He shall teach you all things. He'll teach you everything. Yeah. Bring all things to your memory. Here we go. I love it. You got to believe it. How many believe the word? Yes. Yeah. 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 The Lord is going to bring you your memory while you're in the middle of this warfare. The words that he's told you. That's, That's right. why you read the Bible back over here. Yeah. Because you may not memorize it. But when you begin to walk in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hey, somebody testify about this yeah. right now. Woo. You walk in the Holy Ghost. The word will just start pouring yeah. on you. I'm going to remind you of everything I've said to you. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Peace I leave with you. You know what that meant, Sister Miss Jane? That was something he was sending to them after he left. Yeah. You can have peace whether you feel the presence of the Lord or not. That's right. Huh? Because he gave it to you. Read. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Oh, you can't find it in the world. You can't find it chicken soup for the soul. You can't find it in Irma Bombay. You can't find it in Dear Abby. You can't find it in a psychiatrist's uh -huh. office. You can't find what Jesus has given to the world else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Free. Give out to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Neither let us be afraid. Hallelujah. Wait a second. Come on. You don't know what I'm dealing with. I don't care what you're doing. That's right. I know too much about what you're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I can't sleep at night. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right, brother. Hallelujah. Huh? It's all right, brother. Hallelujah. Read for me next, brother Terrence. And everybody knows that the devil is a liar. Yes. He's the father of all lies. Yes. He is. Breathe. True. Psalms 25 and 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Yes. But I don't know what to do. If you ain't heard from God, do nothing. Right. right. Say, but I gotta do something. I can't just sit there no longer. The book says, wait. I'm gonna wait. wait. And Brother Ronnie, I believe the book also says, they that wait Woo! on the Lord and right. shall renew their strength. Proverbs 30 and 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Yeah. Every word yeah. of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Read. John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth yeah. shall make you free. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got nothing to pray, if you got nothing to say, then you go to the book and you begin to declare truth. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my shelter. The Lord is my hope. The Lord is my strength. Baby, turn to turn the candle of the person over Brother David and Sister Maria. I'm aggravated about that candle. We know we're in a war. Saul and India were in a war, but they weren't in warfare. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. I've kept it so long today. Yes. Um, That's okay. Come on. I don't feel bad, though. 
going to leave, somebody's going to look back on this day and say, that day I was changed. That's right. 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 Yeah. 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 said, you naughty little boy, you come to see the battle. What battle? What battle? Ain't no battle. I know you're in a war, but you're not fighting. Oh, yeah, you're fighting. <laughs> you're fighting with your little brother David. Yeah. Ain't it amazing how that happens? Right. Ain't it amazing how that happens? Next thing you know, we're fighting amongst one another. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We started with Timothy. Let's wrap it up with Timothy. I thank God. This is Paul and Timothy. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Here we go. All right. Thank you, Jesus. See, Timothy struggled, folks. Yes. Timothy was timid and Timothy was fearful and Timothy had infirmities in his body. Yep. But he was called. Yep. And Paul struggled again. Paul stood in the gap for Timothy. Yes, said, I pray for you today and night. He didn't talk about him being a sissy. He didn't talk about him being a baby. He didn't talk about his commitment waver. He didn't talk about him being afraid. He just prayed for him. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God. And you can pray somebody. You can pray somebody into deliverance. Right, yes. Brother Larry, they went over to the lifeboats and they took an axe. They were getting caught. They were getting ready to lower the lifeboats because the ship was rocking and rolling. And Paul said, wait a minute. This is the Holy Ghost. This is me right now. Paul said, wait a minute. Don't get in the lifeboats. He said, because there stood by me this night. The angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. And he said, you'll all be saved yeah. if you stay in the boat. And then they took an axe and they cut the ropes and let the lifeboats fall off, Sister Maria, lest they be tempted to get into them in the yes. storm. Yeah. He said, I greatly desire to see you, Timothy. I'm going to see you. Brother David, I'm not sure if you ever saw him again. This is his farewell letter. I want to see you. Being mindful of my tears. You know what Timothy's crying for? Because he's in a struggle. Yeah, yeah. You're not the only one that's ever struggled. Right. You're not the only one that's ever cried yourself to sleep because you don't know what to do. No. They get it in the Bible. Mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when you overcome. He said, the reason why I've got joy is because I remember the true, pure, honest faith that's in you. Yes. Because I know where you got it from. Right. Yep. Oh, you talk about the Holy Ghost. My right. weapons are my heart. But they're mighty through God. He said, Timothy, you've got great faith in you. And I know where it came from. It was first in your grandma. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you yeah. gotta believe in something besides balance and sense. You gotta believe in something besides uh, old yeah. albums and, and an old African hung across the back of the couch. Yeah. You gotta believe in something yes. that'll yes. keep them when the enemy comes. Yeah. 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 Faith that was in your grandma Lois is in your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded it's in you too. See, the Lord wouldn't be having me preach this to you today if you didn't have what it took. Wherefore, here we go. Stand with me. Two verses. Here we go. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance. Oh! I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift that's within you. 
Yes. You don't need something new. You just need to revive what's already there. I'll give you power to tell those servants and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Stir it up. Stir up the gift that is within you by the putting all of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Yes, Lord. What does that fear say? Inadequacy. Weakness. I can't do it. You know why we don't trust the Lord, Sister Maria? It's because we're scared to trust Him. You're right. Yeah. We're scared to trust Him, Brother Shane. The reason we got to put our hands on everything is because we're not sure He'll do what He said He would. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Say it. Of power. And of love. 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 Now, I know you want to think that that means a clear head. It does. But you know what it really means? That you have a clear head to do what you're supposed to do. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You just don't know what I'm going through. I don't know. But if you come to me with it, there's a good chance I'm going to tell you I don't know what to do either. Yeah. But the book says, I have given you the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yes. That means there is nothing that the devil can bring against you that can stop you from doing exactly what God told you to do. Yes. Yes. He's laid it out there. And what do I do now? I pray and I fast and I read my Bible and I come to the house of God and I give what I'm supposed to give and some more. That's what offerings are. I give and I give and I give and I'm going to give my way into victory. And I activate my faith and I activate my love. And I declare the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. And I speak truth. Amen. Here we go. Is that what I think it is? Just stay with me a minute. It's a struggle for survival. Yes, I've been in me before. I'm out here on the battlefield. Sometimes I stand alone. That's when I reach for my holy armor. I pick up my shield of faith. I march Take out my sword. This Can you connect with it? Here we go. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. 